Okay, so we're working out 173 times 23. To me, that's really part of a geometry problem. Imagine I was given a rectangle that's 173 units long and 23 units wide. 173 units this way and 23 units that way. And I asked, what is the area of that rectangle? Well, to work out the area of that rectangle, I have to multiply 173 times 23, length times width. That's it. So this computation is working at the area of that rectangle. All right, so my job is to work at the area of that rectangle. Now, I'm a mathematician. I don't like hard work. Um, in fact, I will work very hard to avoid hard work. And what I'm seeing right now are very awkward numbers. I don't like these numbers. I want to make them friendlier. And my first instinct to make them friendlier is to think of 173 as three parts. I can think of that as 100 and a 70 and a 3. So let me split the rectangle into three parts. A part that's 100 wide, a part that's 70 wide, and a part that's 3 wide. Now, a picture is badly not drawn to scale, so not drawn to scale. I mean, this should be very narrow compared to that one, but the information in the picture is correct. It's just my scaling is off. No big deal. Uh, 23 still aw is awkward as well. So let me break that into two nicer numbers as well. Let me think of that as 20 and 3. So I'll make this 20 and 3. So I've got six pieces now. I've broken my rectangle to six pieces, and each piece has uh, nice numbers associated with it. For example, this piece here is 100 uh, uh, long and 20 wide. In fact, I know the area of that piece is going to be 100 times 20. Uh, it's going to be 2,000. In fact, I can work out the area of each of these six pieces in turn. I can do it in any order I like. Uh, 70 wide, 3 high. Uh, 70 times 3 is 210. The area is 210 units squared. Uh, 3 times 20 is 60. Uh, 70 times 20 is basically 14 with a couple of zeros. 14, a couple of zeros, 1,400. Uh, 100 by 3 is 300, and 3 by 3 is 9. Great. So to work out the area of the rectangle, all I have to do now is add up the area of those six pieces. Great. So I'll have a 2,000, and I'll have a 1,400, and I'll have a 60, and I'll have a 300, and I'll have a 210, I'll have a 9. If I add these up, what do I get? I get a 9, I get a 7, I get a, whoa, I get a 9, and I get a 3, 3,979. There it is. So I did a big addition problem in the end to work out the area of this rectangle. I did an addition problem. I did that here. So where's this 519? Where's this 3,460? Well, look at this. Look at these three pieces, the 2,000, the 1,460. They, if I combine them into one number, that would be 3,460. And if I look at these, these pieces here, the 300, the 210, and the 9, if I squish those together, there's the 519. This 519 is really these three pieces of the rectangle. This 3,460 is really those three pieces of the rectangle. Bingo. And it makes sense I add them up, because these are three pieces added together, another three pieces added together, add up all the six pieces, that's the final answer. Whoa! If I turned it around and look this way, the 69 is those two pieces together. The 1610 is really those two pieces together, and this 2300 is really those pieces together. What the school algorithm is really doing is actually just the area model, the natural area, written all pieces out, except it's trying to be efficient with the pen. In the 1900s, ink was precious. Use as little ink as possible. Don't draw a rectangle. Don't write out all six pieces. Can smush them together, smush the pieces, smush them together so you're using less ink. And I will admit, drawing all that is it takes more work, it's a little bit slower, like 15 seconds longer for me to, for me to draw all that than to do one of these. So these are efficient on pencil and paper if speed is important to you. I don't know why speed is important to you, but if speed is important to you and you have to do it pencil and paper, don't be in the 21st century, then this algorithm is really doing this area model, but doing it efficiently with less ink, because ink and paper are precious, remember. So there it is. That's the long algorithm. That's the long multiplication algorithm. It's just this area model. Chop up a rectangle to pieces that make sense to you. And of course, it doesn't matter if you read it horizontally, look at it this way. Look at it vertically, look at it this way. You have to get the same answer in the end. It's the same area in the end. That's it. Now, when I actually have to do long multiplication with pencil and paper, I will draw myself a rectangle, at least in my mind. Actually, you can almost do this in your head. If you like to memorize multiplication, or like do multiplication facts in your head, then actually visualize a rectangle and you can do it. You can, well, I can almost do it, almost do it. I'm, I'm not good about this stuff and I don't care to be good about it either. But you can actually see what's going on. So there's the long multiplication algorithm that's not actually mysterious. It really is this area model in disguise. The trouble is, most curricula don't teach what it really is. So then it becomes this mysterious thing to memorize, do 50,000 problems on it, you'll feel familiar to you, and then you'll feel like you understand it. Again, people tend to equate familiarity with understanding. 